Uh, welcome to the show, Nick Major. You are a British award-winning singer as well as a dancer, uh, rising to fame through your appearance on Pop Stars, The Rivals, and the creation of boy band Fix, having four top 20 singles with them and touring with Liberty X and Blue. Uh, you've also worked with Duran Duran. In 2006, you went solo and performed as the lead vocalist of the Chippendales and on the UK theatre tour of Here Come the Boys. There's a ton of other stuff to talk about with you nick thank you so much for joining us here on the show and please do tell us more well first of all guys thank you very much for having me uh, on the show absolute privilege it's crazy it's been a crazy um colorful life in music so far so good uh, yeah. ups and downs peaks and troughs yeah but it makes us who we are you know and absolutely we have that experience behind us to keep fighting through and looking forward to the future very positively at the moment yeah, yeah. and what's in the future I've got quite a few festivals coming up oh, cool. for the summertime. Uh, I've got quite a few pride festivals because I'm a sort of strong advocate for the LGBT community, uh -huh. um, which is obviously getting stronger and better every single year. So we've got to keep the fight strong. Sure. Um, and I've just loved performing live. So I'm um, going to be singing in my uh, home city of Leeds yeah. for about 10,000 people. So that's going to be quite a quite a cool experience. Wow. So yeah. I'm just getting my set list together for that and hoping that, you know, everything sort of opens doors. The more positive you are approaching things, I always think that doors open when the timing's right. So I'm very blessed to sort of still be doing it at 40 years old. Yeah. 40 years young. <laughs> yeah, young, right? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Now, now you're, you're a writer as well, right? I am indeed, yeah. I like to uh, I like to co-write with people, definitely. You're a collaborator? Yeah, I like to collaborate. I always think you can learn a lot from people and from their experiences. Nobody ever has it 100 percent, you can always learn something from somebody so i'm always grateful to you know collaborate with people and get get the magic together yeah it's yeah. beautiful you know, when i met ray charles one of the things he said to me you know i'm, I'm this was like 77 and and he said he said you know i've been in this business for 33 years and i'm still learning i i believe that i, I believe that we're always striving to become the best artist we can possibly be. And I don't think that ever stops until the day that we die. I truly believe that. Uh, me too. Tom? Going back to, to how it's sort of started in the in the music side of things for you with the with the kind of pop stars, uh, the rivals kind of start there. Did you think where you are now would happen based on where, where you started? Is that sort of where you've aimed at going into it? Did you think, oh, well, this is going to be... I'm going to be in a band or did you want to go? Did you have a mind to go solo? What was the sort of thoughts you had yeah. there? So if, I, if I go back in time to when I was just a teenager, uh, so going back quite a few years now, obviously, it was quite evident I wasn't the academic type of school. <laughs> I always kind of aimed towards the performing side of things, yeah. dramatics, music. So at talent uh, competitions at school, that's where I thrived. And mm. that's where I kind of realised that that's my passion. Hopefully in the future, if I'm lucky enough, I can make, you know, good money from it. And, you know, that's what I did. So at 16 years old, I got put forward for a TV show, which worked out okay for me. But the actual TV show that I auditioned for was Popstar's Rivals in 2002. My dream as a teenager, I always used to watch programs like Top of the Pops. Mm. I used to watch bands like Duran Duran and sure. a lot of things from the 80s. And it, that's kind of like, that was the holy grail for me. So I used to watch that every Thursday. It was on a Thursday when it was really started. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. And then just recorded it every single week, and I just prayed and I prayed and I prayed. One day, if I was lucky enough, if I worked hard enough, because you've got to work hard as well, that I would perform on top of the pops in a band at the time, because that was where my mindset was at. And yeah. I did always dream of being in a band. Like I watched yeah. Backstreet Boys, cheesy as it may sound, but they were a great band, um, yeah. Boys to Men. And I just... Put myself forward for this TV show at 18 years old and threw everything at it. And luckily enough, I got picked to be one of the final 10 boys for the live shows. Pete Waterman came around to my house uh, yeah. with the family. Very, very monumental day for me indeed. And sure. that was the moment that everything that everything changed. And I was just kind of like, thank you, Lord. That's like, yeah. it was amazing. So Absolutely. dreams do come true if you're brave enough to follow them. And the Top of the Pops performance happened after the show aired. We'd written a song together with the band Hold On Me. And it got to number 10 in the charts. Cool. And we were just riding that wave. And the yeah. performance was 
I'm very proud of that performance. People sometimes laugh at it and say, oh, but you had no microphones, man. You were miming. Well, back in the day on Top of the Pops, that was what it was all about. It was blatant miming on Top of the Pops <laughs> because you didn't want to sacrifice the vocals that you'd spent so many hours on in the studio. You wanted to recreate the video that caused a bit of a stir and, yeah. uh, and we gave a great performance and we made an impact and I'm very proud of that. That's one of my all-time proudest moments performing on Top of the Pops. Nobody can take that away from me. No, yeah, yeah, for sure. That's the top. So that's it. That's how it happens. Top of the pop, yeah, yeah. absolutely, yeah, 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 for sure, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I don't think I've ever seen that in, in the States, you know. You never watched Top of the Pops? Oh. I can't believe that, Skylar. I can't believe well, that. Uh, well, but <laughs> that shot, shot. The theme <laughs> tune's going around in my head right now. Don't, <laughs> don't, don't, don't forget I'm 300 years old. <laughs> Led Zeppelin. It was Led Zeppelin, wasn't it? The oh, theme tune. It was Led Zeppelin, yeah, it was. Yeah, great what, theme What was it called? I don't know the name of the track, but it was a, yeah, Led, Led Zeppelin track did the theme, they did a the whole theme tune. A whole lot of love it was. Oh, of course, yeah. Oh, that, that's, that's a, tsh, that you're talking about rock, man. That's, that's serious. A that's a tune, that one, yeah, yeah. Iconic, iconic. Absolutely. Absolutely. Led Zeppelin, that's by like yeah. 70s, right? It's, oh, that music 70s, would have been, 70s. yeah, yeah, 70s. Yeah. Yeah. Before I was born, guys. <laughs> oh wow! What a... <laughs> Just throw that one in. Here we go. Well, you know the the beautiful thing is, see, when you're talking about somebody's music way back then, even when you was was a youth, you know what I'm saying? It look how music just lives on in you. You never forget some oh. of the songs that you heard when you was kids. And and, and uh, I tell people all the time, I, uh, play your play your kids some of the music that you grew up with, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's, going, it's going to be before the computers. You know that already, Sick. right? Yeah, for sure. But, but I, I want kids to see just talented human beings that are blessed to play instruments, right? Mm -hmm. Because because the, the com computer is not the whole world. No, it's not. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, and it's it, not where it started. It's not where it started at all, no. No, you were singing before computers was here. That's it, you know, right? And, and, and you was playing, but you was playing with musicians, human beings, you know. Like if the bass player don't show up, you don't have bass, right? That's it. <laughs> right. Yeah. That, bang on, bang on, bang on. Yeah. That, yeah. That's how it was in my time. But I want the kids to see these talented yeah. human beings that's been home all day practicing on their instrument. Yeah. Can't yeah. wait to get to the club that night so they can show, you know, what they've been working on, man. And, and you know. See, with bands, it's a whole different thing because you you're assembling a group of people with different personalities, right? Yeah. And I, I proved that one time. I had five bands play a Earth, Wind, and Fire tune, and they they played the same notes and all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. But each yeah. human being has their own sound. Unique. That's the, that's the Unique. that's the beautiful yeah. part about it. You yeah. your voice your voice is the gift. Uh, well. The voice was the first instrument, you know what I mean? But they, but it's a gift, and and you can't plug it into the wall. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. You know, if you, if, if you don't show up, that sound don't show up. You know that's what it. I mean? Yeah. And if, if you are in a band, you know, if you get four or five different voices from different walks of life to come together to create a sound that works, that's like a rare breed. That's like yeah. magic. And it just, you know, it happened the way it did with me and the guys. We all got plucked out of obscurity. Mm. And the way that our voices all came together when we were harmonizing was absolute magic. It's an instrument. Can't take that away. It's a mm. beautiful melody instrument, man. The, you know, yeah. the 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 beautiful thing that because because with singing, you can get an air sound or mm. you can get a, a chest sound. Yeah. Or, yeah. Or, or you can get a, th a throat sound, yeah. You know, and and but it can only come from you, right? See, yeah. when I look at when I look at Sade, she doesn't have a wide range, right? But you know it's how her. She uses it. It's how she uses it. Exactly right. You know, yeah. you know it's her. You know it's her. No matter what instrument is playing behind her, you mm -hmm. and that's what a vocalist needs to develop is your own mm -hmm. sound. Yeah. Hundred percent, bang on, yeah. So I've learned a lot throughout the whole years working with different producers. You know, you, you like I said to you before, Skylar. You know, you learn something different 
from every single person that you work with. So if you can take all that experience and put it together for your own, you know, self-worth, you know, you if you're really focused and you're serious about this, you know, you've got a lot of experience behind you. So it just makes make sure that you do something positive with it and change, change the way that the world sees everything. You know, if you've got a voice to do that on a platform, you've got to you've just got to go for it. Go for it while you still can. I love what you just saying right there because uh, when you bless with a, a vocal gift, mm-hmm. now it's all about what are you saying? Yeah, yeah. What's your message? Yeah, that's it. You know what I mean? Because you got the gift of, of of doing melody with your with your vocals, but well, what's your message? You know, that's the most important thing. That's that's why music for global change is is the thing for me because. It's same thing you're talking about a love song, which there's five billion love songs. Five billion. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What hasn't wow. been what, what hasn't been said already in love? You, <laughs> you, can go, you can go find it on the radio and anywhere. You know, I'm feeling like this right now. And you can go find somebody else has said it already, right? Mm-hmm. But with so, social conscious on, there's only 192 million of those. And they a lot of them change the world. Yeah. I mean, look at look at Imagine. One of the best songs of all time. End of. Wait, wait, but he's thinking, Imagine Peace. And, and that song came out 300 years ago and it's still relevant right now. Yeah. Always will be. Look at the greats. I mean, I, I grew up just constantly. Freddie Mercury was on my TV nonstop. He was like my idol, like not in terms of just voice, but performance-wise. He's, he's, Excuse me, he, he he's from Africa, isn't he? Yeah, how he Sounds held himself. About, yeah. Sounds about, yeah. How he held himself in interviews, you know. <laughs> I think a real a real star is somebody who who is just as interesting getting interviewed as as they are musically in the videos. That's to me, that's the definition of a true superstar. And that's why I love people like Lady Gaga's, Prince, all these people, they're just iconic. A star is somebody you make. What what I mean by that, they, when they sign with the label, the label mm-hmm. will sign them to a, a, a staff producer t- to do a song on them. Then you got somebody they're gonna bring in for image, like mm-hmm. in Warner Brothers, right? And, and they True. make a start. They make, but a, but an artist mm. is already made. That yeah. person can write and produce yeah. and perform yeah. their songs. All of it. You don't. You don't have to. You don't have to get no songs from me. I can write it myself. That makes you a superstar. Yes. That's yeah. what separates the stars from the superstar. Yeah, and and stars and people that are already stars before they go through that mill. You know, they're like diamonds that have been under pressure for so many years. They've gone through all the heartaches. They've gone through all the rejections. Have been yeah. told that they're not good enough. They've gone. There's not one star that I've read upon and looked at their star rate. They've, they've had it easy. Not one of them has had it easy. They've all had a massive, massive moment where they've been rejected. Right. Yeah, yeah. That's their inner core, that inner strength and inner belief that tells them, I'm not listening to you guys. I'm going to carry on. Thank you, but no thank you. And I'm just going to carry on regardless. And that's that's the sign of somebody that's determined and driven, and they all end up being that way. It's like something you were saying early. But basically, you have to have courage. Yes. But listen, man, Tom, couple come on, Tom. Well, I just want to ask a little bit more about your um, your music. You've uh, recently worked with Mick Lister on a full album, and you've also got uh, a, a studio performed recent single, which is Hanging On To Hope, which is a great, um, great title. So I want to talk a little bit about the album, the, the sort of um, the sort of songs you've got on there, what kind of what kind of musicality you're using on those, uh, a little bit about that. So the album was created with um, myself and Mick Lister during COVID, believe it or not, which was a terrible, terrible time for us all to have lived through. Yeah, we just decided to get together. Uh, He's somebody that I worked with in the band many years ago, and I got back in touch with him. I had a lot of stuff that I wanted to talk about. I feel that everything that I've been through, um, my coming out story, sexuality-wise, relationships that I've been through, COVID, and, you know, my observation of, everything that happened during that time. There's a song called Welcome to the New Way on the album. Yeah. It's just about how things changed. There were no planes in the sky. Sure. People were clapping outside. It was just a very haunting time. It's like Ghost Town, right, at the beginning. Yeah, yeah. 
So there's many different experiences on the album that people will enjoy, but we just got together, recorded this, wrote it together, and it happened. We wrote these 10 tracks in three weeks. Wow. Okay. wow. We just maxed nice. out. That's that so sweet. Yeah. Cranking about Because we have, we have a connection. You know, yeah. when you've got a connection with somebody in the studio, you just reel it out, man. It's like, it's just there. Yeah. You know, there yeah. was no writer block moments. It just came out. He just wanted me to explain to him what I'd been through in my life. So he had a greater understanding of what we could write about. Sure. And we really have. We've, we've written this album and we've produced this album. So it's timeless. So that even though it's three years since it's been recorded, it will still be relevant and contemporary now if you were to put it on the radio, which is a, yeah. which is a talent in itself, really, that we've been able to do that. And it's, yeah. it's honestly, it's a fantastic, fantastic step forward for me. Definitely. Yeah. What do you like best now? Do you like the recording side or the performing side? Kind of, I've got two hearts for both of them, really. So they both bring out different sides. I always feel really comfortable and comforted in a recording studio with the right yeah. producer. It feels like home. And I love to obviously hear all the different sounds, putting the headphones on, you know, bringing out vocals that you'd never even think you could produce, right? But with the right producer, they're like, no, you can take it higher. You can do it. Nick, stop playing it safe now. Come on. There's something more in there. So I'll yeah. give it for the fact of exploring your vocal talent. But the live side of things is always, always going to be the, the thing that sets you alight. That's where all your musical endeavours come to life. That's mm -hmm. where your vision comes to life on stage. And if you can get the crowd to sort of get on your side, which can be a challenge sometimes. Yeah. That's a work of art in itself. So yeah. throughout all these gigs and all these years, you learn how to how to get the crowd on your side with the right songs, with the right speeches, I guess, in between the songs. It, it all comes with time. It's a craft. Mm. Nothing like performing for music lovers. No. Yeah, that's true. So that's how you know to your eyes when you turn around and say live performances. But, but Nick... Especially when they're singing your lyrics back to you. <laughs> Nothing better. <laughs> Nothing better. Yeah, true. You, Nothing you, better at all. You remember you were sitting there writing them lyrics, right? And yeah. then you sing them to this microphone and recorded it and you send it out to the world. And when you get there, they know your songs. If that ain't the best feeling, I don't know what it is. Put magic. it this way. Absolutely magic. Didn't exist before you wrote it. Put it that way. How about you know? that? You put it. You're putting something into the world that wasn't there before. That's the whole point. And then if you've got the message to back it up that's unique and relatable, you, you know, you're laughing. And, you know, people people will love you for what you do. And fingers crossed everything goes forward. Best part was my come say, I love that song. You know what I mean? I'm like, damn, there's 8 billion people on the planet. So many people ain't heard it yet. Like, what can we do about that? Yeah. Well it's when they sing it to you and then they then you realize they're in a foreign country and can't actually understand <laughs> otherwise you can't communicate other than through the song that they've learned but isn't it sky you've had that before haven't you with when you've had it happened, it happened to me 18,000 chinese i'm in china and i'm singing three times a lady with the commodores man and and they had those lighters going side. It's beautiful to look out there and see them lighters doing like that, right? And they singing the whole song with me. But when I got backstage, I say, "How you doing?" I, I, <laughs> I couldn't understand the word. We couldn't. <laughs> we couldn't have a conversation. Because oh, that's man. yeah, the power of music, doesn't it? But I just saw them singing in English, right? Mm. That show you how powerful it is. <laughs> For yeah. sure. For sure. The Tom, sorry to uh, not answer your question earlier about hanging on to hope. It was yeah. a, a song, obviously, just to digress. It was um, a positive, uplifting idea that I had based on a band called Savage Garden. Okay, yeah, yeah, I know it. Yeah, um, I know. One of my favourite songs of Savage Garden is a song called Affirmation. So, mm -hmm. hanging on to hope was actually based melodically on on the feel good factor of that song by okay. Savage Garden. Yeah. So, I just wanted something positive after COVID to sort of make people feel a bit happier and put a smile on the face. And sure. Thank you. perfect for the pride events that I'm doing. And yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we need more of that. We need more of we that. Do. We need more of that. We do. Definitely. We need some positive radiators in the world. We need That's more it. of that. Very much. Yeah. So. My saying is, let's give let's give bad news some competition. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Love that. I'm stealing that one, Skylar. <laughs> you know, if we get enough positive music out there, they get nervous. They go, "Hey, man, wait a minute." Life yeah. ain't all bad, yeah. is it? Come yes, on, people bro. shook. Yes. Yeah. My social conscious songs, man. I, 
I've written about for the homeless and women's empowerment, families that went through suicide, all kind of mm-hmm. positive vibes. I got some kids. I got a bunch of kids, man, singing with me on positive vibes, right? Mm-hmm. And, and I, I'm getting this footage from all kinds of places with kids in different schools talking about positive vibes. You need to see it. Yeah. Feel it. Well, you feel it. That's it's right. genuine. You feel it. Yeah. yeah. Do you have some social conscious, so, uh, I mean, positive, like social conscious vibes? Definitely. Definitely. That's why I think it's great to have a platform to be able to put across your observation of it all because you can actually change the world through music, which has right. been proved time and time again. That's why we're here. That's why those artists are here to do that. We're like voices for everybody. Mm. It's an amazing privilege. Yeah. You got to really. use that gift and go share it, you know? Definitely. 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 Uh-huh. For sure. Yeah. What I do want to ask um, is just for our viewers' um, sake, how they can uh, interact with you, maybe any kind of social media presence you've got, kind of websites telling us what, you, what you're what you up to. Yeah, so if you want to keep up to date with um, with what I'm up to and where I'm at, uh, my Instagram is at Nick Major, N-I-K-K-M-A-G-E-R, and basically follow me, and uh, I'll try and give you a follow back in a non stalkerish kind of a way. Then you can keep up to what I'm, uh, what I'm doing, right? Great stuff. <laughs> but all it's right. all love, all positive vibes, and I, I just want to say thank you guys for speaking to me in such detail today. It's been uh, oh, quite it's refreshing. Pleasure, That's the word, refreshing. Bless you for yeah. the privilege of your time, my brother. Thanks for coming yeah, on. Thank you. Thanks for coming on. Thank yeah. you so much. Namaste. Namaste. Namaste indeed. Thank you very much, guys. Namaste, yeah. brother. you so much for watching to stay up to date please click subscribe and hit the bell you can also join our group on facebook and find us on linkedin and instagram